What's happening, Champion Squad? Welcome your beautiful faces back to the channel. Today's video, we are continuing the coaching series. This is going to be episode 5, but again, I'm not keeping track in terms of numbering them. And this is going to be another ranked game for you guys, and I believe he's Platinum 4. Now, really quick, I do want to say, if you guys are Diamond 3, anyone who is Diamond 3, and you can upload 720p, eh, I'll take it, but 1080p. If you can get 1080p, Diamond 3 gameplay with no voices, DM me on Twitter asap because i want to get that for the next review video a lot of you guys are stuck on diamond three and that's definitely a big wall to try to leap over as a team and get to that master rank but again a lot of you guys are also stuck on platinum four so this video will help extremely wonders as well so we're gonna go ahead and drop a like on my man's video daddy caustic that's actually his name on twitter too i believe so he is a caustic man you guessed it right we're gonna go ahead and leave our mark as well where's our where is it at there she is bam little heart there hopefully he likes it but yeah we're gonna hop right into this and if you guys are new to the coaching series this is essentially breaking down people's gameplays figuring out stuff they can touch up on fix their mistakes point out their mistakes and also give you guys my opinion on what i would do in this situation so he is solo queuing and it's going to be a platinum for gameplay his teammates lifeline and what else do we have as a third a loba loba that's kind of debatable not the best player for ranked and you know, a lot of people get stuck on Platinum 4 is because that's when usually teams start to get a full squad going, start to get a, a party going. They have all their call outs. And if you're playing solo, that's where you really get stuck at. But before we get in today's review, we do have a sponsor for today's video. Today's sponsor is brought to you by Project Orochi. They are a streetwear apparel company based in California. And they recently just dropped their fourth season, which is an Apex Legends themed collection, which features a variety of legends. They offer t-shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, and more. My favorite design is the Mori mask, which is based off of Gibraltar. Now these masks were carved into a large piece of wood and were used to honor their ancestors. They ended up sending me my favorite design and I was actually stunned how comfortable and great the quality is. And if you're a Wraith, Pathfinder, or even a Lifeline fan, they have you covered. They offer worldwide shipping and free shipping with in North America. You can also use code DEEBS, yes, what Lifeline says, for 10% off your purchase. Links to their storefront and Instagram page can be found down in the description below. And thank you again, Project Orochi, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's take a look at their team composition real quick because you don't really see too many Lobas. And again, when you get to those Platinum 4 lobbies, that's when you really need to take advantage of the meta, the best players in the game, and people that make the most sense to use. On this team here, you got a Lifeline Lobe and a Caustic. The only downside here is that you have no mobility. So essentially, I would swap out Loba for Wraith or Pathfinder. That's absolute, That's like a must, really. Caustic can only do so much when you're locking down buildings. Lifeline's really good. You can't go wrong with Lifeline. But then Loba, I mean, how clutch is she going to be in these situations? How good is she really going to be? She only has her teleport for herself. You can't teleport the team. You can't make a zipline for the team. Yes, you can get the boutique and get some purple armor but really you want to have that mobility to get you rotated early to get you rotated when there's teams holding you out stuff like that so that's really got to put into situation here and again i don't this team combo is okay it's not the best but you do need some mobility so the looting dome right now they kind of split up which i like because there's they're not contested so split up on the buildings make sure you can loot it as quick as possible and again it's tough when you are playing solo and you're not using your mic with these guys in game chat so coordinating with them what to loot and whatnot it's all about the ping so make sure you're pinging where you want to drop to loot that and split up loot as fast as possible so they're making a good rotation now i ended up skipping it forward because they just looted the rest of dome and the rotation is right to lava city and again you you do find a lot of teams that land lava the last review video we made there was three teams that landed lava and boom they got some teams fighting over here so this is a really good rotation spot to catch a team fighting and just absolutely third party them get all their loot and really destroy their game. <laughs> so he's running the G7 Mastiff. Not a bad combo. Uh, close range is going to be a little bit iffy. Okay, because the Mastiff, again, that's really, that's up, up close. That's like barrel stuff range where you're hitting those 100 plus damage stacks. And then you got the G7 where it can get you screwed in some close situations. So this combo is like super either long range or super close range. There's no in between with this combo and that's really the downside to it. So instead of the Mastiff, maybe swap out for like a prowler or r99 or if you don't want to use the g7 and you still want to keep the mastiff run that 301 run the flat line run like a nice ar that'll catch most of the long range fights but definitely lock down the medium range and then you'll you'll be set up for success so right now they're just on the rooftops here and they know there's two teams fighting over there 
Let's see how they approach the uh, gunfight here so they can take it on. So I didn't want to talk in that exchange there. I just wanted to see how we really played it out. Now I'm going to come back and, and break it down because there's uh, quite a few things that I pointed out there that could have been capitalized uh, to make this go much smoother, even if you are playing solo. But the biggest problem I see was at this point right here. So where you guys heard them fighting, you knew they were in there. You knew there was two teams in there for sure. And there was a couple knocks. I mean, if you paid attention to the kill feed and also hearing to the type of guns that they're using in the building. Once you start using these weapons, you're gonna understand what type of weapons they have in the gunfight. And I heard an R99 and uh, maybe a G7 or a Prowler, but then you have to really pay attention to the kill feed where you can see these weapons listed up there and you know for sure if that's getting a knock in this specific gunfight. That's number one. And number two, even though you are playing with randoms and you really couldn't coordinate a team push super quickly and super effectively, you need to man up because you had you have caustic your full blue you got your gas traps ready and you have your ultimate right here they're in absolute shambles the person that jumped out already died that was a little bit before i don't want to rewind back to that but now when you pulled up right here by this ramp right there someone's resing right now they're resing so they're in absolute shambles they're, they don't expect someone to come in and just absolutely bully them and this is what you have to do you got to go in there you have your ult, just toss your ult right on that res, whoever's going for the res. Even if it's domed, if you toss your gas ult next to the dome, the gas is going to seep in. So that's going to be really clutch there. But, but essentially, you guys waited way too long to make this push. And again, if even if you are solo, you need to man up and get in there. When your team knows that you're fighting and you're throwing your gas ult and you're getting a knock, they're going to back you up. They'll be there. Don't worry about them, really. And then you ended up taking the gunfight with a G7 inside here. But again, now they already healed. They, they regained some leverage that you could have just caught them while they were absolutely destroyed. And they took a, a, a fair gunfight, I, I guess you can say. Because they're ready. Look at that Gibby right here. He's pre-aiming you. This guy, maybe you caught him off guard a little bit. But the Gibby was pre-aiming you. And they have another player on some other floor. But touching base, if you pushed it way sooner. As soon as that person that jumped out of the window of this building died. Because that guy insta-died. Then you got to go in there immediately and start causing havoc. You got a good knock here though. You know, Massive was debatable to pull it out because that's a little bit of distance. Maybe you would be hitting for like 30s or 13s. So that's some good shots there. And then your teammates got a knock. So there's only one person on that team. Then you notice a third party, right? If you push this gunfight in this house earlier, that third party would have not had a chance to shoot you because you already had this team wiped. By the time they came, this team would have been wiped. 100%. So now they're coming up. I don't know how many people there are on that team. We'll find out. And as soon as you're at that third party, though, you got some traps here. You got to start trapping these doorways. Trap the doorways. Get your ult ready. Be ready to throw the ult. There's a nice trap there, but you got to get one from behind because that's... There you go. That's how that path knocked you. That's the main entrance right there on that front doorway. That little ramp that brings you right up to the second floor. So if you had a trap there previously before you put it by the zip line, you would have been in the clear for sure. He wouldn't have knocked you. And I think this lifeline was getting a bug where you can't res in your own friendly gas. It's kind of weird. Some type of bug there. That's a nice ult there, though. That caught that Watson. She's done for. And then it sounded like a squad wipe. Yeah, that was pretty much it. So it looks like that's another team back there in zone, man. All these storm fights are so... It's annoying, man. Go either way sometimes. You can go either way. It's hard to see in the storm, too. They made it so bright. And I have no idea how far the safe zone is from here. He didn't pull out the map yet. I really want to see that. See if they're close to it. Good shots there. Easy knock. 
That guy died out. Maybe he had Sofras. Not entirely sure. He could have had teammates. It is ring one, so they do have some time if they have heals. But the more you're sitting in zone and making a lot of ruckus over here, the other teams are going to hear you that are not in the storm. And they're going to gate hold you out. That's why I hate making so much noise in the storm. But let's see if he takes this balloon here. The balloon would be clutch. You could take that balloon on top of sorting, main sorting building. That'll be a really good spot to come out of storm. So while he's rotating here, I do want to say thank you guys so much for 80,000 subscribers. Uh, it, it means the world to me. It means a lot. You guys showed a ton of support over these last few months. And I set a like goal for a thousand likes on the last coaching review video. You guys absolutely destroyed it. I think I got to increase it now. I think we're going to go for 1500 likes. Let's see if we can break 1500 likes on this video. I know you guys could do. You guys destroyed that last one. So thank you guys so much for that. So they pulled up right here. They're going to full heal. That's a nice lifeline drone. And now let's see if somebody's gate holding in the mouth, though, because that's that's going to be huge. They, a lot of teams can hear that fighting back there, and they know you're going to pull up into them. There's the team there. Problem with posting up like this, see, they're not even in the next zone and they're not close to it. So you got to make like two big rotations to be absolutely wonderful. So when you're stuck on the, the border, when you're not near the zone, it's it's tough to play. So that's why I like rotating earlier. That Lobo almost got destroyed. 20 HP. It's a nice knock there. 2v3 right now. Lobo's kind of weak on health. Get that Mastiff out. There it is. Nice. Take your time with that. Take your time with that, right? You want to juke him first and then shoot. You're sort of trying to... You're shooting a little too early. When you're trying to juke, try act like you're running the other way and then just make, take two step back, then pre-aim, then shoot. Now, real quick, before they actually rotate, I do want to go back on this. And I have a couple things I want to say that can definitely help a lot of people. First things first, this touch is based back with having no mobility on the team. Wraith would have been clutch right here to make a portal from those blue boxes right past anywhere near cover and ahead of this team. And then if they try to take balloon, you got the G7. You can beam them off the zipline on the balloon. But the key thing here, you don't have mobility. So instead, you got to really pray and hope your movement is good enough to avoid the shots here. And, and let's take a look. Right here, you crank a cell. Just to cap up a little bit before you make that next big hike down here. And then they start nading you guys. And that's where you just full sent it. Right here. So you see, you can hear the bulls hitting the floor on the bottom right right here. Now they hit you a little bit. That nade did most of the damage before you started running. Now they hit you a little bit, but as soon as you start getting tagged a little bit more, and I think you do like right around here, you start getting tagged. Once you get tagged, stop moving. When you're running in one direction like that, just stand still. I see Daltus do a lot and I started incorporating it and it works absolute wonders no matter what character you're using, even if you're a big hitbox like Cossack or Gibraltar. When you're running in one direction and there's a team that has a wide open angle on you and they really have the opportunity to knock you in that situation instead of running directly straight there without taking any pauses when you start to get hit stop and maybe even after you stop maybe take one step back and then run forward and then repeat maybe run after you do that step back run for like three four steps and then do it again the key here is to try to be as unpredictable as possible because they know where you want to go really they they know you want to go to cover right so Trying to make it as unpredictable as possible when you're going to that cover is really going to help you avoid that many shots. So here, boom, right there. As soon as you got hit once, I know you're this close to cover, but maybe take a step back. You wouldn't have get, gotten hit that second time and then run forward and you would have made it in the clear with a little bit more health. But again, if they started beaming you when you were farther back from this cover here, you could have saved a good bit of health. Right here, I probably would have hit balloon instead of running it in like this. Walk up to that balloon, crank one med kit, take it up, and you're out of there. I mean, really, it's going to get you past all the way over here. I mean, you didn't even climb up the donut to take the zipline across. So you're taking unnecessary storm damage here. 
that balloon would have went justice for you guys because you want to be around close to full health before you're taking a balloon because you're not gonna be able to crank a heal for another maybe 10 15 seconds by the time you go up it and land now they're doing a good job of rotating here the safe zone is in train yard but it's not going to end there according to this big zone where it's more pulling towards the skyhook entrance where the titty pole is uh yeah so it's not going to end the train yard so good job of not going into train because then you would you know there's going to be teams in there it's going to be a hassle trying to get through without mobility on your team but you do have a team up in front let's see you guys play it you get ulted maybe take height on the top left instead of running back i don't think that ult was connecting up here whoever's teals made a really good play right there see she's not getting hit she's just getting shot at that was a, that would have been a really good spot to hold right there while that ult was going off because number one you don't have to run back to it and number two you have high ground yeah right up here would have been perfect but you're still in zone here i mean you're vibing you're chilling nothing crazy going on right now and really you're in a good spot because no one can come behind you guys as long as you clear it out right here and no one's there ready they're not going to rotate when it's ring four through highway and take all that storm damage even a portal want to get you past there no, no team is going to do that no don't ult it don't ult it save it mm -hmm. that could have been saved i think he's taking somebody that's down but that could have been saved that guy's already knocked over there Right there, you were a little bit behind your team while they were fighting. Maybe post up with them. Make sure you're on top of when they're fighting to get on the scene as fast as possible because you could have been there a little bit sooner. I guess that ult holded them back a little bit from pushing, but I don't think it was needed there. You could have saved that. So the person your teammates knocked, that guy got finished up. So definitely less than a full team around in this area. There they are behind there. That's another knock. Okay, so it was a two-man team. Now yeah, team's wipe. What's up? Oh, they had the loot, man. Oh, my God. Gold hemlock, gold helmet, gold body. They got everything. Holy. So while we're here, because he has an option between an Evo and a gold shield, the biggest factor between what should you take, a gold shield or a purple Evo? I would take if you have enough batteries. That's two or more batteries. You do have two. So that Evo could go justice if you want to take that. And that's what I would actually do, in my opinion. But the gold is pretty good because then when you don't have batteries, you can crank those cells and that's going to help you get away of some tough situations. But again, if you have about two or more batteries, grab that Evo. I personally love the Evo. When you get it red, you're a tank hitbox like Caustic where you can absorb more damage and you have fortified passive. That's a GG. And you do also have that G7. Now, even though that Evo was purple, you'd get that leveled up to level five right away. Not really worried about that. With that G7 fully decked out, you'll be vibing. So it looks like he's doing a weapon swap here. Ends up picking up the Prowler. Absolute god tier gun. And this is the combo that I was saying, which is near the best combo in the game. You got long range, absolutely locked down. Close range and medium range, locked down. Prowler's an absolute god, and it's decked out. He's got the select fire on it. Every Look at that G7. Juicy G7. Wow. Okay, so let's pay attention next zone here. Titty Pole is still in. That's a valid choice if they want to go up there. Oh, there's a team up there. But you're caustic and you nearly have your ult yet 89 percent 90 percent so you almost have the ult i mean it's a good spot temporary to hold for now but i don't think it'll end here and titty pole is still in that's why that pole is really good man that pole is phenomenal so what you actually could do is i don't know how close the zone is to that zip line maybe it's not that close but if this if this zip line's like too much in zone you got the other zip line to take so what you could do is you caustic ult up on top of that pole because there's a team up there and that's going to block all their vision. It's going to make them really weak. And if anything, they're going to drop down from there. Unless you have another caustic that can stay up there. So what you do in this situation, check out other squads that are in the area. You want to pay attention to where the other teams are located. So instead of bantering like this, because you know you got to run into them, it's not a good look. Right here, pay attention to where other squads are positioned. Because you still got three total squads besides you guys. There you go. That lifeline did a good job of pointing one out there. So that's two. We're still looking for one. Which are probably around here somewhere. Little ratty. So a team on top of pole and a team down to the left. So you could do a couple things here. You can either play under the pole if you don't feel comfortable taking the zip line up. The play that I said before, which is ulting the top. Let's see where that team is to the left here, though. I don't really... Where are they? Yeah, they're kind of far out. You could honestly ult the top and take the zip line up and absolutely butcher that team. And then you're in next zone with high grounds, the best spot in the game. You guys decide to rotate bottom. Okay. And if that Loba was actually pretty smart, and if you ult the top, she can TP up there and force them off of high ground. 
when you have your ult going active because that ult is going to last. If they try to stay it there and that ult connects in a decent spot, they're going to die. They will die. That team on the bot, the team outside over here, they just came out of zone actually. They rotated a little late. They took some storm damage. Okay, so now the pole is not in zone. What is that guy doing? I have no idea who, who which team he was a part of that caustic. Maybe the team on top or the team outside. I don't, I don't know. There's a bloodhound scan there. He might have been a part of the team on the bottom. Because I doubt those people up top would have dropped down. There's no way they'll give up position like that. And you know for a fact that they're going to rotate last second. They'll stay up there until right when it's about to close in the zone. And then drop down and rotate. That's a revolt. Good send back. Nice. So Revenant Bloodhound. That might be... Realistically, it could be a two-man team down there. Which could be a potential ape with your gas hole. To get them off the scene. I know you don't really want to be fighting and be the first to engage when there's only two other teams left. But the, when the team is playing like that on top of you... You could potentially ult down there and just play in your gas. Because the team on top is not going to be able to see you that good since you're in your gas. Unless they, unless they have Digi threat. Which a lot of people, I mean, it's debatable. Some carry it, some don't. But if you clear out that team back on the bottom there, right after they came out of the Revolt, that would have been a good time to push when you sent them back. Because they didn't do too much damage to you guys. That's tough. Go oh, back, Rez. Ah! Almost had him. Almost had him. Oh, that's a... The other team is still alive? Jeez. That was a 1v1v1 right there. Well, while the path was self rezzing So, there's a... A few things... That I want to touch on real quick in this situation where if you do have a team that's being a pain in the butt talks where they have just the dominant position on you and you really can't do anything is number one, you could have either altered them on top and force them off because they'll jump off. If they don't have a caustic up there, they're going to jump off. Trust me on that. They'll jump off and then you'll, you'll make it a, a fair playing field where you could potentially put them sandwiched, the two teams sandwiched. So they'll fight each other and then you can come clean up. That's number one. Now, if you didn't ult the top, what you can also do is even though they have high grounds and you don't want to be the first to engage when it's two other teams left, you got to force the engage and throw your ult. When you throw your ult, you're going to be able to hide in that and use that as cover, essentially. And there's also like a little cliff right here that the team, that two man team, that was only a two man team that was hiding down there. So that should be a nice, quick, simple squad wipe that you could have did pretty quickly before that team could have dropped down and ate you. And I think the best time to push that team would have been right after they got sent back from the revolt. Because now they don't have full health. And guess what? Cost of gas affects health. So that's a bonus on top of that push. And number two, you will have some decent cover from the cliff. Not even the, the gas is a bonus, right? You're going to get some cover from the gas because they're not going to be able to see you if you're in your gas. But you do also have some cover on the cliff side here. It's a little ledge that you can hide underneath that you would have been you, you wouldn't have gotten shot from this angle up top. So that would have forced them, if they wanted to push, forced them to drop down. And again, you can rely on your gas for a little bit to stall that fight. You guys waited last second to push in. And, and really right here, I wouldn't be trying to take this fight. Even though it's, you know, he's looking at you, probably ult around here. You want to ult there and then run in. You don't want to be taking storm damage when it's round, what is it, six or five? It's hard to see. It's 720p quality. But look at that. One tick did near 25 HP of health. Let's see how many times you get ticked from it. Twice. So 50 HP gone. And then 50 HP gone from... Or 50 armor gone from the guy you were trying to fight. Which you did knock. Which was a good knock. But maybe if you ult there. Instead of ulting to the right here. Because when you ult, you want to play inside of your ult. Because it's a good use of cover. Even though you're not... I mean, they can shoot through the gas, obviously. But they can't see you. Unless they have a digi threat, they can't see you. So wherever you're throwing your ult, that's where you want to be pushing into. Then you go down here, which is unfortunate. The team, the team on the top made a zip line to this area here, uh, which was a good play on them. You got to give props to them. They made a good play. 
But here, this, this is the last thing I want to point out. When you crank this off, res off, because it was a 1v1v1. It was a Bloodhound, you, and a Pathfinder. Pathfinder was halfway to self res. And you right here. Instead of trying to take this fight, I would have scooped around behind the Pathfinder and forced that Pathfinder to be in between you and the Bloodhound. Now, what that would have done was have the Bloodhound shoot the Pathfinder. He's not going to shoot you because the Pathfinder is closer to the Bloodhound. And then if that Pathfinder is getting shot at by him, he'll probably, he's probably not going to, it's a 50 50 gamble if that path is going to shoot you or turn around and shoot the Bloodhound. But I'm willing to take that gamble if it means winning the game instead of trying to fight this Bloodhound Red Evil full HP, full armor, whatever he had. He had some good shots here, but again, you're down on health. 75 HP total gone. And it's tough. So that's that. Path, that's the Pathfinder that does suffer. So if you came up and around right here behind him, you would have forced them to fight. And then hopefully that path, maybe that gold bag or if anything, did some damage to that Bloodhound. And then boom, you got some decent shots on the Bloodhound. You'll catch him off guard. And essentially either A, he would have to, the Bloodhound would have to reload or weapon swap. And that's where you have the advantage. And does the Bloodhound win it all though? I just wanted to see. I think he does. Yeah, he does. Bloodhound wins it. So he plays top three. Not bad. You got full KP. But that end circle, that, it was tough. Overall, it was a good game. GG's. You gained some RP from it. Decent RP as well. But that is going to do it for the video. If you guys want to check out his original video, it will be down in the description below. Be sure to check out Orochi in the link below as well. And if you haven't seen my other videos in the coaching series, I do have a playlist, which I will, I'll either put in the description or I'll put it on the end screen of this video. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And as always, this has been the boy Sol D. I'm signing off. Peace.